The leaders of the Sahel are not the only ones who want the eradication of the influence and presence of the region's former colonial master, France. The people are also in tandem with their leaders, and this is why anti-French sentiments have spread across the region. Western media may say that the reason for the spread of anti-French sentiments is because of Russian propaganda, but that's a wrong notion. The leaders of the Sahel may be growing increasingly close to Russia, but the fact is, Russia is not the reason why anti-French sentiment has spread, and neither is it because of the Sahel leaders. The truth is the citizens have had enough of French influence and presence. They have seen that partnership with France throughout all these years has not resulted in anything tangible. It has not benefited them in any way, and the only one this partnership with France seems to benefit is the puppet leaders. Now, under those leaders, the citizens could not do anything to express their sentiments toward France, and those who did were usually shut down. However, with leaders like Captain Traore, Asimi Goita, and General Tiani, who possessed similar feelings towards France, it became easier for the citizens to express themselves and show their true feelings regarding France. Recently, there was a heavy protest in Burkina Faso, with hundreds of citizens who are staunchly loyal to President Traore. But what was the reason for the protest? Well, they do not want any iota of French presence in the country. After Traore came to power in 2022, he quickly ended diplomatic and defense relations with France and also kicked French forces out of the country. The people of Burkina Faso were excited about this decision, but this recent protest reveals that it is not enough for the people. The protesters gathered together in front of the French embassy, and their demand was that the French embassy should be relocated from its current location because it is too close to the minister's building. The minister's building is in the presidential palace, which is where President Traore carries out his duties as president of the country. Now, the French embassy is approximately 63 meters from the presidential palace, and for the citizens of Burkina Faso, this distance is too close to where Captain Traore works hence the reason for the protest. Coordinating the protest is the National Coordination of Citizens Watch Association and other Burkinabe nationalists. They all gathered together in front of the French embassy in Ouagadougou to make their demands. We are not proud of the French embassy which is close to our presidency and our security. Furthermore, we say that when the enemy is close to you, you have to be very careful. The enemy who shows himself is better than the enemy who hides, but our enemy is real. That's why we demand that the French embassy be removed, said a protester. Footage from the protests revealed demonstrators carrying the Burkinabe national flag, as well as Russian flags, plus placards reading, down with Macron, down with France, and we are a sovereign people. Demonstrators could also be seen blowing horns as they made their way towards the French embassy, where security forces cordoned the perimeter. According to media reports, the protesters stressed that the proximity of the French embassy to the Burkinabe presidency posed a risk to the transition authorities, including Ibrahim Traore. Looking at the protest and the reason for the protest, we can conclude that the citizens of Burkina Faso love their president, and they want France to completely leave the country. Now, the question is, will the French embassy be closed down or simply relocated? Only time will tell. But can we blame the citizens of Burkina Faso for their demands? Of course not. All they and other citizens of Francophone countries have ever experienced from France is exploitation. Since the Berlin Conference resulted in France having several African colonies, it has continued to exploit these colonies even after they gained independence in order to build its economic and military strength on the global stage. France has used several tactics, including the assassination of leaders who stood against its interest and entering into agreements with puppet leaders that served its interest. One such agreement is the colonial impact, some of which is still in operation today. The colonial pact signed between France and the African colonies maintained French control over the African states' economies. It took possession of their foreign currency reserves. It controlled the country's strategic raw materials. It stationed troops in the country with free passage. It demanded that all military equipment be acquired from France. 
It took over the training of the African police and army. It required that French businesses be allowed to maintain monopoly enterprises in key areas such as water, electricity, ports, transport, and energy. France not only imposed import restrictions on a variety of commodities from outside the Franc zone, but it also imposed minimum volumes of French imports. This pact created a dependency policy for African countries, including reliance on the French economy, reliance on the French military, and an open-door policy for French private enterprise. This is why when any insecurity problem occurs in Francophone Africa, the French military is always among the first foreign powers called to help, and this is how France was able to solidify its military presence in Africa and grow it rapidly, having military bases in several African countries. However, not only did France solidify and grow its military presence in Africa, the colonial pact also gave France the exclusive right to supply military equipment and training to the African military by deploying troops and intervening in African countries to defend France's interests. This meant that if Burkina Faso and any other Francophone country wanted to get military equipment to boost its military strength, they would need to seek permission from France because the colonial pact gave France an exclusive right. This gave France even more leverage over these countries. In an exclusive interview with Sputnik Africa, the Burkinabe defense minister, Kasum Koulibaly, confirmed this fact, saying that Burkina Faso used to rely on its traditional partners, who imposed their conditions on the country in terms of what military equipment to buy and from whom. According to the minister, Burkina Faso has a lot of military equipment acquired under unfavorable conditions imposed by its former partners. We often bought very expensive equipment under these conditions. We have a lot of tanks that were purchased mainly because we were tied, very tied, to a partner who imposed on us what to take, he explained. So, if you have ever wondered why some Francophone countries have outdated military equipment and are not properly equipped, the reason is because of this inhumane colonial pact. Now, it would have been nice if the presence of the French military in these countries helped to reduce insecurity. We are very sure that the anti-French sentiment might not have spread across the region the way it did. But the French military forces with their high-grade military equipment and highly trained soldiers could not and did not help to fight insecurity in the region. In fact, according to the report and research, the insecurity in the Sahel region was worse off than before they came to supposedly help. If you combine this together with the presence of French multinational corporations that have exploited the Sahel region, extracting its minerals including gold and uranium, and transporting them to France without giving anything back to the people, you would understand the pain, anger, and resentment of the citizens, not just in Burkina Faso, but in the Sahel region at large. So when Traore came into the scene, it was easy for the people to throw their support behind him and help spread the anti-French sentiment. And with French influence drastically reduced in Burkina Faso, we have been hearing of great development happening in the country. Right now we can say that Burkina Faso is one of the best countries in Africa, not because it doesn't have challenges, but because of its leader, Captain Traore. Recently, Burkina Faso was ranked among the top 10 best governing countries in Africa. It's surprising because Burkina Faso is a military-ruled country, yet it beats all those democratic countries to be among the top 10 best-governed countries in Africa. This is to tell you that the world is watching, and there is no denying that Captain Traore is a great leader. In Burkina Faso, the army is working hard to combat the insecurity, and we have heard of several victories won against the jihadists. Developmental works are also ongoing. The gold refinery and mining waste facility is currently in construction, as well as the tomato processing facility. Agriculture has greatly been boosted in the country, and Burkina Faso is on its way to food self-sufficiency. The people of Burkina Faso understand that Captain Traore is there to turn things around, and that is why they want to protect him at all cost. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.